really here tonight to have a conversation, and we're thrilled to have Audrey Smalls here. I've had the pleasure. Um, it's a pleasure to finally have you here as a speaker. You've been such a devoted patron and supporter of SWAN, and we're really thrilled to have you here this evening. Um, we wanted to have a talk about the Johnson Publishing Company and its intersection with art and culture, and it suddenly dawned on me, Audrey, that you were the perfect person. Who else can say that they've been on the cover of Jet Magazine and worked at Johnson Publishing Company, and been a big patron and supporter of African American Fun Arts. You've been an amazing supporter. So you're uniquely qualified to talk about many things tonight. Thank you. And we're thrilled to have you. Uh, many of you know who Audrey is. Um, as I mentioned, <laughs> she's been a famous fashion model, entrepreneur, founder of the Ground Crew and a major force in the fashion and art world here in New York. Uh, you bring together many different people, and that's why we're really excited to have so many different people here at Swan. We're going to begin by talking about you, and when did you first find out about the Johnson Publishing Company? What was your first interaction with Johnson Publishing? The Ebony Fashion Fair back in 1958 before many of you were born. <laughs> that was the very first Ebony Fashion Fair in 1958. I wanted to be in the Ebony Fashion Fair as a model, but I was too tall. Back in 1958, no one was 72 inches long. <laughs> models were five, 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 four, five, six. Really? Oh yeah, models were so, short. So but I knew about Ebony before 50, okay. 58. I think we all grew up with Ebony and Jet magazines <laughs> in our apartments, yes, on coffee tables. So to tell you how long I've known, probably from the time I was born, you know, my mother had an Ebony magazine. Yes. That was just something you, every. Colored Negro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was part of uh, African American culture and part of a, a, a growth of art and culture really across America, middle class America. Everybody could have a magazine and enter the lives of wonderful people that read in pages of Jet Magazine. And you yourself was you were on the cover of Jet Magazine. When you're, when Twice. When you're, when you're, <laughs> <laughs> so you're not here. In 1962, I was on the cover of uh, Jet Magazine, and not so much because I was a model. I was the first, they tell me, the first Negro that they hired on uh, Wall Street. I worked for Bayesian Company. They were looking, they had black men, but they didn't have a black woman. And so I got the job as a trainee to sell mutual funds. And I worked for Bayesian Company for over a year. They trained me for approximately uh, six, no, nine months. And then you had to take an exam to get your NSAD license. And so I was doing that for a while, a very short while. <laughs> you know why? Because I was trying to sell mutual funds to black folk, and some of them didn't have life insurance policy. So how am I gonna get $100 down and $10 a month? After I sold my whole family, that was it. <laughs> I got to know about money and finance. And that's how I started uh, investing. I learned a lot, I was so happy. I still have my books. I have to get rid of it. We've just talked about that. <laughs> you, you developed your business acumen. You yes. got some skills. In, in 1962. And, and you, you had a career that actually brought you to Chicago and the Johnson Publishing Company, correct? Well, the way I got to Chicago, I had married. Okay. I married the doctor. Yes. Every mother wants their daughter to marry a doctor. <laughs> and then... That was 1969, wow. and I married Dr. Stanley Hughes. I was wife number four. <laughs> <laughs> and we were married for 18 years. 
15 wow. months. <laughs> The power of the force. Eighteen. I know you're thinking years. Months. <laughs> and then the, the judge told me, oh, you're very young, you must get a job. So I had a very dear friend who worked for John Johnson. Her name was Ladaris Foster. She was John Johnson's one of his uh, secretaries. He had about three or four secretaries, but Ladaris was the number one secretary. So I called her and I said, can you get me a, a an appointment with Eunice Johnson because she ran the Ebony Fashion Fair. And so she said, yes, I can do that. And they, they made the date for me and I get dressed up. I'll never forget, I, I was in a Jeffrey Bean. Mm, yes. 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 Those of you who know Jeffrey Bean, <laughs> Linen dress, it was so pretty with a red belt, red, red band mm -hmm. white gloves. Mm -hmm. oh. We wore gloves back in the 60s. <laughs> and I was all dressed up in Ebony Magazine at that time was at 1820 South Michigan Avenue. Right. It wasn't in the new building yeah, that you know about. Yeah, it was 1820, so it was 1960, 1970. And I go for this meeting to meet Eunice Johnson. She was an hour late. <laughs> she had been to the beauty salon. <laughs> I had nothing to do but wait. But anyway, they were looking for models that, that particular day, so there were a lot of models. And Mr. Johnson took me to the library there, and he said, well, tell me about the models, or do you, since you wanted to be a commentator, talk about, and I talked, it was a male model, it was great. And I talked about the peak propels. <laughs> It was a Glen Clare jacket. It had beads in pockets. It was double breasted. Two vents back. Oh, oh honey, he said, really? The jacket had all of that? <laughs> so, you know, I was hired right on the spot. <laughs> and then I told him to call my ex boss, Mr. Paley, because I had worked for Lane Bryant Tolls. I was a model, tall girl, model, and I was also the fashion coordinator. I had a couple of jobs. That, well, that's how they do. Anyway, to make a long story short, he calls Mr. Paley, and Mr. Paley says, well, if you don't want her, we want her back. <laughs> so he hired me right away. They wanted me to go to Paris right away. Oh. But I couldn't because I was getting a divorce. <laughs> move out of our apartment. Those of you who know Chicago, 67 Lakeshore Drive. 6700 South Shore Drive. Anyway, nice, very nice. I had to get out of there, and the, the judge told me he would uh, see to it that I got money from my husband every month so I could, until I got on my feet, you know? Because, you know, I didn't have a job in those days. So that was that. And I've been with Ebony for? How long did you work? Seven years, from August the 13th, 1970, to August the 31st, reverse that, yeah. 77. Seven fabulous years. Working for the greatest, this, this, the best job any young woman, anyone can have. And I see some of my JPC is here. Uh -huh. We have other uh, ex Johnson Publishing Company. Yeah, that's Richard. Jeff Burns. Jeff Burns ran the New York office. It's Jeff Burns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then one of my Ebony Fashion Fair models from 1976 from Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> so you were in the offices of the Johnson Publishing Company uh, when this art was on the walls there. The I'm going to tell you something. This is different. From, from the art that I knew. Mm -hmm. They had lots of different mm -hmm. art. Yes. So when I left in 77, the last Ebony magazine, mm -hmm. probably 2009 or 2010, this is some new stuff. I, I remember a few of these fabulous well, works of art. Well, the painting behind us painting. Uh, okay. actually hung in, it's in, it's in the pages of Ebony magazine in 72. It was in, uh, Mr. John Johnson's John office Johnson. in his executive This was suite. in his office. We didn't get to his office too often. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the 11th floor of that new building. His executive office. Yes, so there were, there were offices. 
But what was it like to be working in the company? What was the atmosphere? It was really the pinnacle of black corporate culture. In the 70s, well, you know, you worked for a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. And he treated you as if you were a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I flew all over the United States first class. Mm -hmm. wow. I had a green card that said international flights. I just showed him the green card and I got on any flight I wanted to get on. Mm -hmm. I had an American Express card mm -hmm. with my name on it, but he got the bill. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very, and I traveled once with them on the Concord, just once. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was a he first was, class. But you know, when I went to the very first uh, interview with uh, John Johnson and Eunice Johnson, there was an Elzia Couture. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walked in 1820, and I own Elzia Couture, so I love Yes, I, So when I walked in, I said, oh my God, that's an Elzia Couture. And I had to look around. It was so, art was everywhere. I was yeah. most impressed because uh, as I tell my wife, I tell her, I said, well, you know, I was an art major. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did. I majored in art at uh, High School of Music and Art, which is now LaGuardia and CCNY. Okay. Okay. So I have a few paintings. Yes. I should show you my paintings. <laughs> <laughs> I love art. I have collected art. And I'm going to tell you, how many of you know an artist named Merton Daniel Simpson? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, well, he was also a dealer of African art in the neighborhood. That's how I really got to know art. When I met Merton, I, I was invited to, to his um, showroom or apartment, mm -hmm. his gallery apartment, and he was at 1063 Madison Avenue. <laughs> 80th Street, mm -hmm. Madison Avenue. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know Martin Simpson until I moved down. Until he took Young. And I go to this apartment, and I'm with some friends. I'm like, oh my god, that's a Klandansky. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's a Chicago. Mm -hmm. Whoa. And, and he said, oh, you know art. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because I knew some of those design the artists on his walls, but he had a lot of African art, which was incredible, incredible African sculptures. Well, he was, and with with Merton, Merton took me to my very first auction at Sotheby's. So we will allow you to mention that once. <laughs> Well, you weren't open then. <laughs> this is this is early on, and so we. No, this is a this. I'm going way back now. This is this early '60s when I met Merton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, he introduced you. He to introduced me, and I got to know of really got to know about fine art. And he used to take me places. He said, well, don't speak. Just sit there and look pretty. <laughs> I got to meet Mr. Rockefeller, Nelson Rockefeller, purchased from him. Mr. Solo, the Solo building on 9 West 57th Street. And because of Merton, I just got to, and then he would give me pieces from time to time. <laughs> for Christmas, for your birthday. And then he was a fabulous painter himself. Yeah. So I've always loved here. art. So yes. I, you, you can't have a home or an apartment mm -hmm. if you don't have art mm -hmm. on your home yeah. 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 and books. Mm -hmm. You must have books yeah. and art. Yeah. And I don't care about your yeah. furniture. Yeah. I, I really don't. <laughs> furniture is just okay. But art, and so I, even my, my mother and father, I grew up with art. Yeah. They had plenty of paintings right. on the wall, so. And then they would put my paintings on the wall. <laughs> well, you've, you've cultivated uh, your, your eye, and you've also experienced a lot of great art and collecting. Um, what do you look at today? Where, 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 do you, where do you go for art? Well, we just, um, can, I, can I say this, Gail, what, what you gave me for my Christmas present? <laughs> Anyway, for, for Christmas, I and the, the, the artist is here. He's so wonderful. Glenn Tunster. Where are you, Glenn? And it's cold. 
beach girls. And Glenn lives in Bahia once a month or what? Or whatever. And he's the Brazilian ladies with not too many clothes on. And sexy! And so that's our newest. Uh, I collect Glenn Tunstall. Uh, and I, I collect other people. Uh, I have catlets. I have a. I don't want to name drop. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, a lot of people here have. You know, I have, I have a friend on the front row. She has fabulous art in her house. She loves art. We used to go to all the art shows together. I'm not mentioning any names. And then I have another friend on the front row. Who has, I'm not mentioning any names. And she has a hot. You know what a H O T is? Hot. <laughs> Henry O. Henry O. Ten. I have a friend on the front row that has a Henry O. Ten on her wall. Mm. Well, they got one here too. Folks. Oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and there's there's a painting here that I like. Uh, I think it's over here. It's uh, Arthur Rowland. I think it's '64. Yes. Yeah. And. I have to tell you this story. In, in 1974, probably, maybe it was 72, I don't remember my every year with the Ebony Fashion Fair, but early 70s, I was in Detroit and uh, I had friends in Detroit. And so one day we had our day off because Detroit, our shows were on a Sunday. Two shows, two mm -hmm. o'clock and eight o'clock. And on Monday, I went to visit a friend and she took me to her lawyer's office and I go in his office and I see all these fabulous paintings and then he said, oh, his name is Arthur Rowland and he can't pay me in money so I take his paintings. <laughs> so I said, well, I must go see these paintings. So I went to a project, yes, the, on the ninth mile, those of you who know Detroit, way out there. I think I was with a friend named Earl Harvey, I hope, I don't think I've been about myself, but anyway, I go to his apartment and I didn't really see anything I liked, so I, had, I asked him if I could use the ladies' room, and I did. And in the tub <laughs> were these fabulous paintings. Wait till you see my Arthur Rollins. Much better than the one <laughs> But I just want to tell you that when Merton Simpson was alive, he had a small bedroom and a, and a bed up next to the wall, right next to the wall. And I always like to say to people, well, who do you sleep with? And when I say that to people, what do you mean, who do I sleep with? I want to know who's hanging in your bedroom. Not so <laughs> So Mrs. Johnson found out that I knew Merton Simpson and she knew he had some tanners and she said, Audrey, can you see if you can get me a tanner? I didn't. I didn't say anything to Merton. I didn't want her to have a tanner. <laughs> Years ago, you, got you think I pulled the, the shower curtain back? Yeah, the shower curtain. Did. I'm not surprised. You know how people go to your late baby ladies' room, and you know they open up your cabinet. Oh yeah. I don't do that, but I know people do that. I mean, 
collectors collect and they run out of wall space. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you have paintings in my bathroom? Don't you have paintings in your room? How many people have paintings in the thank you? That's where they wall wear, but there's a wall. I haven't put any on the ceiling. It's not recommended for conservation reasons. <laughs> Discovering a lot of them for the first time because they were contemporary young artists yeah. working at the time, mm -hmm. and the Johnson Publishing Company kind of launched their career. And it was an opportunity for for many. They supported these artists. They gave them really the first collection, and many of these artists were very proud to list the Johnson Publishing Company in their bios as the collection. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've tried to give them due recognition. We worked on the bios, we tried to present as much information as possible. There's a lot of information that we don't know, and you just <laughs> telling us about how you met the artist it gives us really. I met Picasso. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eunice wanted the Picasso. Those are the stories that have to be told. We're, we're all well, Eunice people. wanted to. Uh, she wanted the Picasso, so we we were in Paris. You in went July. To no, we we went we went to the south of France. Uh -huh. You know, he lived in a little town in the yeah, south of France with yeah. Mendon, South Africa. Yeah. He wasn't there. I don't know what's going on. Anyway. <laughs> We found him, the, we found him though. <laughs> he was on the left bank. We left Paris to go get him, and, and then it was, she did buy a Picasso, and then I met a, the, another gentleman in uh, uh, Rome. De Chirico? De Chirico. Mm -hmm. You just wanted to De Chirico. Wow, so that's what I didn't meet Chagall, but she had, oh, their home. Because they moved, I'll not, I'll not forget when they moved to, uh, Lakeshore Drive, the yes. Carlisle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the Johnsons were. Uh, it was 1140. Mrs. Johnson was saying, you know, Audrey, I live 1140 Lakeshore Drive. And she say, uh, Jackie Onassis lives 1040. <laughs> 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 and we would go, she, she would have friends. I would go with her in New York to wonderful homes. And these ladies would have lunch. <laughs> we would only. <laughs> and they were showing off their art. I mean, it was hysterical. They would, we would go to their homes and they would have lunch showing, I have Chicago. <laughs> And Eunice would take me with her. Mm -hmm. That one day she called, Audrey, I'm in New York, and I want you to come with me to visit so and so's house. She, I remember 867th of Avenue. You remember the number man? How many of you remember the number man? Harlem girls know the number man. <laughs> Born, bread, and raised, mm -hmm. buttered, jellied, jammed, and honey in honor. <laughs> <laughs> but we went to this woman's house, and that's they would, and then <laughs> Eunice would have them at her home so she could show. Oh, they would just, so it was a group of it's ladies. Proud. It was hysterical. They would have lunch, and we talk about the painting. Oh, so one time she called me, and I'll never forget. I had on my lunar rain mink coat. I didn't want Eunice to know I had a lunar rain. Man, I ran home. I didn't run home. I had to get a taxi from 1276th Avenue to Overlook Terrace to, to put on a cloth coat. <laughs> Line. I learned so Ginori. We would we would go to Florence. 
in order to be going to January. So we did a lot of shopping for clothes for the Ebony yes, Fashion Fair. Yes, yes. We did a lot of shopping with Eunice. <laughs> <laughs> she had yeah, to, but, oh, I, oh, she got mad at me once because, oh, she didn't get mad. She says, Audrey, we, we have to go to this factory and uh, it's called La Lique. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about La Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I know La <laughs> I didn't know Janori. I mean, Eunice. Oh, I saw the world. First class. Mr. Johnson only believed in first class because he grew up. He, he, oh, this is his book. I had to tell you this story. Succeeding Against All Odds. Mm -hmm. He wrote the book in 1989, so I went to the back and I didn't see my name in <laughs> My name is not an inject. I was Peel. So a young friend of mine gave it to me who worked for him and her name is Punch, as in Ponchita Pierce. Oh, yeah. I looked to see if her name was in there. Her name wasn't in there either. You know what she gave me the book. So I was going to read yes, this book, because yes. I didn't read it in 1989. Okay. Wow. Into it, yeah. Unbelievable. Right here it says, he says, among the unique features are a $1 million collection of black, American, and African art and a special library more than 15,000 volumes of black life and history. That's, wow. that, that was in, he had that in, yeah. 820 South Michigan, that Mr. John Matusame was the yes. architect, okay. an African-American architect, mm -hmm. Mr. John Matusame, and oh, Arthur Elgore, I think you had yes. another, yeah. you, had, you had it misspelled. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he designed the whole oh, the, the interior. I know you didn't write that. Oh. Didn't write that. <laughs> <laughs> now, on the elbow. First class. I mean, I've read about uh, everything. It's unbelievable. Hermes, uh, oh, yes. No, it was unbelievable. Yes. unbelievable. Yeah. No, he had um, snake skin walls. Mm. Right, Jeff? Right. Give me an amen on that, an a woman too. <laughs> no, it was unbelievable, this place. And he was a private dining room. He always served lobster, the best, the best of everything. And you know, we didn't have to pay for lunch. No, we didn't pay for lunch. <laughs> but you know what, all of the, but Mr. Mr. Johnson always kept brilliant people around him. The people who really selected his art, how okay. many of you ever remember Herb Temple? Oh, he was yes. the art director. Herb yes, Temple, yeah. Basil Phillips, Basil, Norman Hunter, Herb Nipson with this EIC, Lerone Bennett, Hans yeah. Massacre. Yeah, yeah. All he, yeah. he surrounded himself with young people who were smarter than him and they knew what to do. They and they, they selected most of these. I don't think Mr. Johnson selected any of these paintings. He just left it up to you. But you know, he said, and, and, and he was he was he was an incredible man, Mr. Johnson. And we only called him Mr. Johnson, you know, because and Mrs. Johnson. People say, well, Audrey, you only call her Mrs. Johnson. What's her first name? Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> You never called her Eunice. No one ever called her. But honey, when I was no longer there, I called her Eunice. <laughs> well, Miss Moss, uh, Audrey, it's been amazing. <laughs> we love her. I have more, but I can't tell you everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, this book is relevant. You must read this book. That's great advice. Yeah, I think it's, it's unbelievable. I, I, the people behind this company. Well, here, here's Arthur Elgort. Oh, oh that's yeah. another thing. Arthur Elgort was the interior designer out of California. Palm Springs. Palm Springs. The, the, the desert. The desert. The but it was, he told Eunice and John about this beautiful home in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And it was March 1974, because that was the year my mother passed. 
and said, Audrey, you need a little vacation. Because they couldn't imagine how I could. My mother passed, and I went right to Europe. It was time to go ready to wear. And when I came back from Europe, they said, Audrey, you must come to Palm Springs to see our new home. High on a mountain. At the top of the mountain was Bob Hope. Mm. <laughs> I got to meet Bob Hope because of the John And then their, their place was here. And Arthur Elgort was there. Yeah. Okay. The most beautiful home. Yeah. You know, we knew around all of that. And they, they gave me that honor. They, they, yeah. I was always, I hung out with them. He says, come on, Audrey, uh, fly on out for New Year's Eve. We're hanging out with Frank Sinatra. I don't have any of those pictures, you know. <laughs> but I know you believe me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't make this stuff. <laughs> the Johnsons were very special. I got to meet the the Gershensons. The Gershensons owned the Pontchartrain Hotel in Detroit. Yeah. And Mr. Johnson, uh, or the group, when we went to Detroit, they stayed at the Cadillac Hotel, not me. I stayed at Pontchartrain. Audrey, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, these are amazing stories. You do really have to write a book. <laughs> History is so vital coming from you. You bring everything to life. And, and the art and the stories, and it's so important. So thank you so much for thank sharing. Thank you. Hey. Buy a poster and then have to post a sign. 